Hey, Joey Starr here. I'm in the Oakdale Mall in Johnson City, New York, part of the greater Binghamton area. I came out to Johnson City to conduct a little bit of business and winded up in the Oakdale Mall. Oakdale Mall's actually been here and open since 1975, so it's got quite a bit of history to it. Maybe I'll look it up sometime. <laughs> I got a bit of a wait for a special order to have at one of the stores here at the mall, so I figured, hey, maybe I should just grab a small bike to hold me over, besides the business that I'm conducting right now and the business I've already done. I'm also here to film for the Roadstar Binghamton entry for that. I don't know when that's coming out compared to when this video comes out, but it's being recorded today. Either way, I figured since I'm here, grab a bike, and I happen to spot an Auntie Anne's pretzel place. Let me tell you something. I haven't had Auntie Anne's since I lived in Seattle, so there's a pretty good chance that it's been and if it hasn't been 10 years, it's been close to 10 years since I've eaten there. I kind of walked by there near the entrance, smelled the pretzels, and I started to feel excited. I was like, oh man, Auntie Anne, it's been so long. So I decided, what the hell? Let me just get myself a pretzel, a little soda, and I figured, hey, maybe a little review. What do you think? Yeah, why not? Like most Auntie Anne's that are in malls, there's a pretty good chance just they don't have any specific seating for the place. You just kind of pick up your stuff like I did and then just find a nice bench, preferably secluded like this. But one of the cool things about this mall is that there's a lot of stores here that I haven't seen in a while because the mall closest to where I live in Middletown used to have so many stores, but they kind of packed up and left and other stores took their spot. For example, I passed by Spencer's on the way here. I haven't popped in yet, but I might have to pop in just for a little bit of nostalgia. Also, there's a GameStop there. <laughs> a little bit small, but it was kind of cool. I did peek into there a little bit. It was too tempting to go in and buy something, so I'm just gonna kind of stay out of GameStop for now. Very importantly, next to GameStop, they have a classic style arcade. I mean, I saw that and I had a freaking geekgasm going on. Total geekgasm. And what's cool is they kind of took up two storefronts and they're right across the hall from each other. One side is like everything from the classics, like the original uh, Mario and Donkey Kong, Galaga, Miss Pac-Man, all the way up to modern stuff like a uh, arcade version of the Halo games. So pretty badass. Across the hall, it's a little more open and what they do is they have a few pool tables there, a lineup of pinball machines. I'm telling you, the little kid of me was coming out just to walk and by the place. So I'm gonna hold off on going there too. Another cool thing about this mall coming out now, post New York lockdown, pandemic times, the mask requirements was uh, lifted in the state somewhat recently. The cool thing is that there's a nice mix of people that are masked, people that are not masked. The ones that are masked, you know, they they seem pretty respectful to the ones that want to wear the mask. So it's pretty cool. And much like I've come to expect from Binghamton, people here are pretty polite and warm. You go to walk into the mall, people are holding the doors for you, or if you hold the door for somebody, they're very appreciative. It isn't just obligatory thank you, like yeah, thank you. you know, I mean, it's it's meaningful. I mean, they, they're sincere about it. So I really like that. I find that really charming. On top of everything else, I'm really hungry. So let's get into this Auntie Anne's pretzel. Get that bad boy out. Comes wrapped. It's my pretzel. Bought the original. You can smell that nice buttery flavor that they kind of put on there. Had it salted, but as you can see, not a ton of salt, just a reasonable amount of salt. And I almost forgot I got this. Got my cheese dip. It's like all their cheese dips are kind of pre-packaged. I don't remember for sure, but I could swear that the last time I had Auntie Anne's that I think they kind of poured it right on the spot. They had those generic little plastic cups and they had their own little dispenser and they just kind of poured it into there. Not so anymore, which is understandable. These days, pandemic times, things are more sealed. All right, first we'll take a bite, just as is. Hmm. Soft. A bit chewy. Again, just the right amount of salt. You didn't overdo it. Some pretzel places, you increase your blood pressure with every bite. <laughs> so now I'm gonna tear off a piece here. Really nice and soft. The inside of the bread, let me take a look at that. Nice, spongy, which is good considering I'm gonna put it into the cheese dip here. I'm gonna be honest, the cheese dip doesn't look that great. It's definitely better back when they used to have it warm and waiting and they pump it into there fresh, but there we go. It's got a decent aroma though. Although it kind of kind of tastes like um, generic cheese Whiz actually. It's a good flavor though. Definitely a bit salty. Cold, unfortunately. Again, one of the complaints of our pre-pack is that it is cold. You know, the bite here. It's not bad. 
If you're sensitive to salt, then this might not be the best option for you. Key note to make here, without me asking for it, it provided me with a, a good handful of napkins, which is impressive because A, it seems like nobody's giving you napkins anymore unless you ask for it, and B, I only ordered one pretzel. It's clearly for one person, and they gave me like five, six napkins, so I really appreciate that. Thank you, Auntie Anne's. Service at the place is pretty decent. Young kid behind the counter, he was uh, very attentive, asked all the necessary questions to make sure that I got everything that I needed. Efficient, timely, polite. Again, part of that is Binghamton. They tend to be polite here. Then he probably has pretty good upbringing too, which again, consistent with Binghamton, uh, what I know about Binghamton. I mean, I know there's areas that are a little more ghetto, a little more rude, like any city, at least in this area, in Johnson City, pretty well family or Oriented. And I see that too. I mean, I'm here. I got a bit of a people watching thing going on while I wait for my order. And it's nice seeing all these little families go by. And it's very positive. Again, positive, warm atmosphere that I've come to appreciate from this mall. There's really not much more to say about Auntie Anne's. I mean, I tried the pretzel. It's good. About as good as I remembered. Maybe minus a point or two because the cheese is prepackaged now. I mean, it's their cheese, but and it tastes good. A little on the salty side, but it's cold. It's probably some preserved in here to kind of alter the flavor a little bit. It is tasty though. No, it's not bad. We'll say that it's it's good enough that I'm glad that I got it so I can re-experience. Pretzel's about the same as the last time I had it about a decade ago. Cheese, slightly less. I don't fault any hands for that. You gotta do what you gotta do. If you're in Johnson City, if you're in the area, this is a beautiful mall. It's huge. The atmosphere is nice. They got some great stores here. And coming in through the entrance in between JCPenney and Burlington, then be sure to check out Auntie Anne's because they're still pretty good. Real quick, a very fun memory that I have. I haven't spent a day in Binghamton. I had dropped off the Maharaja to stay at his mother's for a while. My girlfriend at the time and my mother came along for the ride. We dropped him off and then we went shopping around. We went to Kroger's to see if there was some special food for my mom. And we went into the mall, shopped and stuff. I was driving for the drive home. I had the Rage Against the Machine CD called Renegades. Basically, it's a cover album that they put out. And most of the covers, most of it's our old school rap, you know, basically what influenced them. I love the album so much that I knew a lot of the lyrics to most of the songs. And of course, you know, whatever song was on, I was singing along or rapping along, depending on what the case might be, loud and obnoxiously. So, girlfriend's to my right, my mom's in the back. For those in the know, the song Pistol Pump Grip came on. Any of you that are into old school rap, it was originally recorded by Volume 10. I'm not super familiar with the original version. I remember hearing it, but I, I can't specifically picture it up here because I fell in love with the Rage Against the Machine version. And to me, that's the song, and that's the way I always remember it. And I still listen to it from time to time. But that song came on, and regardless, whatever the lyrics say, bad language, racial slurs, whatever it was, not only did I not hesitate to say the words, but I said them loud loudly as if I was performing on stage with Rage Against the Machine with my mother <laughs> sitting in the back. If you know the song, if you know the lyrics, if not, maybe go look them up. Maybe I'll drop a link below <laughs> to the lyrics so you get an idea. Imagine that in front of your mother, a significantly older mother. <laughs> And my girlfriend, she was sitting in the right, and all she can do was sit there and laugh. She couldn't comment, she couldn't say anything because she just thought it was hysterical that I was I was rapping like that in front of my mother as if it was just like Reagan in the back or something, or, or Maharaja was sitting in the car. I just went off. There's a pump rip. Very fond memory, it was just so much fun. I could barely keep myself from laughing, but I was so in the moment, I was like, yeah, that's right. And the other songs on there too, there's some colorful language in there that not necessarily appropriate for singing in front of your mother, and I just, I went with it. And the best part is, my mom never said one word, not one. She learned over the years just to let me have my moments like that. It'd probably be worse if she said something because I might I might have continued it longer, but she just let me do it. Then I'd get it out of my system and it'd be done. That was a pretty smart move on her part, but what a great memory that is. Oof, had a busy day. Had some business to take care of. Of course, you now I was in the mall. Just finished filming my Binghamton episode of Roadstar. Took care of some other business. And now I think I'm gonna go get something to eat and film something for a Star Quality Kitchen. It's a creator busy day for me. And then from there, depending on how much energy I have, I may actually film another episode of something else and finally head home and maybe relax for the rest of the weekend, at least for the rest of tonight. By the way, if you're ever in the Oakdale Mall in the greater Binghamton area, just note that there's only one, one 
public bathroom in the entire mall. If you look on the map and you look for that little symbol, just one, and it's well hidden too. It's right by the main office. And uh, if you're looking at the map, I thought it was kind of confusing to find, but basically if you find where the Cinnabon is, it, there's a hallway that's in between Cinnabon and maybe Bed and Bath Works, whatever it is. Between the Cinnabon and that store where they sell the soaps and bathroom stuff, there's a hallway going to one of the side entrances. It's down that way. Just keep walking and before you get to the doors, you can kind of see on the left, there's a small sign letting you know that there's the mall office and the restrooms. And that's really it at the whole mall. As much renovation and building as they've done here over the years, they never bothered putting another bathroom maybe on the other end of the mall. It would be pretty nice, but that's okay. It's still a nice mall. I, I recommend checking it out if you haven't, especially if you remember those old school malls like we used to have back in the early 90s and stuff, the mid 90s, pretty cool stuff. Early 2000s even. It'll bring you back a little bit. It's a nice mall. Oh my gosh. So I stopped at this pizza place that I want to review. It's a quarter after six on a Saturday evening in the dead of winter, and it is packed. Packed. Barely found a spot. I didn't think I was gonna find a parking spot. Kind of driving by the entrance as I was coming into the parking lot, I was able to peek in. It looked like every table was filled with people. So besides that it's busy, I don't know how comfortable I'd be. Not just comfortable filming, but just comfortable being in there at all. It is still Omicron season, as it will. Don't really want to review it for my car. If it was daytime, I'd consider maybe dining on the hood of my car. That's always a classic. That's always a classic review. But doing so now, outside at night, I don't think so. I think I'm just going to take my pizza and run, maybe. We'll see. Maybe all I'll do is bring this in with me, put it in my coat pocket, and if I can use it, you can use it. And if I can't use it, then I'll probably just go home, which wouldn't be the worst thing. I know Samantha's waiting for me. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that was something. Walked into the restaurant. As I was able to tell from driving by the entrance, packed to the rim. Beautiful looking dining room, nice sized dining room. Lots and lots of tables. Every single one of them full. Waiting area, full. I didn't actually speak to anybody, but if I had to guess, it's probably like a good minimum 45 minute wait for a table, if not longer. I mean, they are busy, very, very busy. This restaurant is definitely more of a family style Italian restaurant, more so than a pizzeria per se. Food-wise, they're a pizzeria slash Italian restaurant, but they don't have that big display case with the slices that they have mostly done that you pick a couple and they toss in the oven. I didn't see that there. It looked like if you're going to eat there, you have to take a table and be served by a waitress, which is fine under normal circumstances, but I don't want to wait that long. It's been a long day here in Binghamton. It's getting close to 6.30. I got to go home and feed my dog. And quite honestly, I'm not so hungry that I have to eat now, but if I did, I think I would just probably just hit a fast food drive-thru or something or a convenience store because it's just a little actually i need gas so maybe i might still hit a convenience store for some foods but i'm not really that hungry i feel like i can probably go all the way home to eat that's really it i mean it looks like a great restaurant i will definitely come back for the review you know that'll be it and then the other two videos i was interested in it's not the end of the world that i didn't film it tonight i'll have to come back and film those videos i'm gonna stop for gas go home call it a night. A Saturday in the life of, I just thought maybe you'd like to take a peek at what a Saturday could be for someone like me these days. <laughs> All right, well, once again, thanks for watching. I'm sorry it wasn't more exciting. <laughs> But if for some crazy reason you want to continue watching my videos, make sure you like, share, subscribe, stalk, and I'll catch you next time, all right? All right, laters.